Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather tonight on this cold winter evening in January to conduct the affairs of the city. We thank you for all the many blessings that you bestowed on the city council and all the many residents of this city too. We also pray that you'll uh, look out after those people that are hurting or sick or, or uh, homeless tonight and you'll be with them. And we pray that you'll also look out for our troops overseas that are serving to protect us. We hope that all that we do tonight, all that we say, and all that we think will be pleasing in your sight. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded that minutes of the January 12th meeting be approved as submitted uh, on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Uh, let me just, uh, I know that there's three communications that I want to pull, uh, uh, so let me just ask that uh, unless somebody wants to reserve three, five, and six, I want to uh, keep one, two, and four. Uh, Let's just go ahead and do three, five, and six and get those out of the way. Does anybody care to make a blanket motion on three, five, and six? Or I'd like to have five red. Excuse me? I'd like to have like five. And I'd like six red, please. Okay. All right, let's do them individually. Let's, let's save the, uh, let's do uh, three. Uh, can I get a motion to accept and file on three? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. On the motion uh, to accept and file three. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. Witcher? Yes. Uh, number five. Motion to accept and file five. And then if you want to have any discussion or want it read, then read it. Fine. All right. Uh, let's just go ahead and get a motion, then we'll read it. So Seven. moved. All right. Motion made and seconded to accept and file five. Uh, Ms. Whitley, would you read it? Yes, sir. A letter dated January 23, 2009. The Honorable Mayor, Pat Hayes, City Hall, North Little Rock, Arkansas, regarding 2008. Faulkner County Detention Center Utilization Report. Dear Mayor Hayes, during 2008, the police department transported 492 persons to the Faulkner County Detention Center for incarceration. The total cost to the city for use of the jail space was $285,930. Because we've had the Faulkner County Incarceration Alternative 457 arrestees posted bond to avoid incarceration, another 123 three persons posted bond after being booked into the Faulkner County facility. A total of 580 people who were arrested on criminal charges that posted bond to assure their appearance in court who had otherwise been released on a summons to appear had it not been for the possibility of confinement at the Faulkner County facility. From these numbers it is obvious that having the available bed space at the Faulkner County Detention Center is having a positive impact on crime in North Little Rock. I hope that you and the City Council continue to support funding for the space. Sincerely, Danny E. Bradley, Chief of Police. Any discussion on the motion? Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Mr. Sister, if I'm not mistaken, that money is in the budget, isn't it? Yes, sir. It, it, we budget. For this next year, I believe, 250000 or somewhere there amount. Yes, sir. Let me uh, also, while you're standing there, Mr. Sisson, uh, and while we're you know, talking about budget, why don't you uh, tell uh, the council uh, what you told me this morning with regard to sales tax collections? Yes, yes, sir. For the last four months, our sales tax has been below the prior year. It doesn't even think about starting to get our the, the budget. It's uh, was This is January. So the last four months, it's been... Oh, at least 5% this year, this month was probably 10 below 07 and 08. So unless we really pick up, it's going to be difficult to meet the, the budget on the, on the city sales tax. The, the county sales tax is, this year was almost exactly what last year was. So we projected a 2% increase for both of them. So we have a long way to go. One of the things, uh, uh, and anybody can ask any questions if they want to, I know I had a staff meeting this morning and I indicated you know, to the staff that I would like for them, and obviously Mr. Sisson is going to continue to track this, uh, to be uh, prepared to address potential budget shortfalls uh, and to uh, uh, consider what they might do if we had to be in a position to ask them to reduce budget. Uh, hopefully. Uh, you know that won't be the case and hopefully we'll pick up uh, but you know obviously again the economy 
uh, is something that we're all concerned about, and uh, and it is indeed impacting our revenue. There's an, you know a couple things we talked about that uh, you know may also we feel have an adverse impact. And you know last year was the full uh, year of implementation on the site of purchase being the site where the taxation occurs. Uh, now there was a removal of the cap of uh, twenty-five thousand dollars. But 20, that removal, 2, uh, sir. excuse me, 2500 2500 dollars, uh, and we thought that might have some offset. And while obviously, again, we can't get that information from the Department of Finance and Administration, uh, you know, it, it, the one thing that we can appear to say that that in the economy is certainly having an impact on our sales tax collections. That's correct, sir. Mayor, you know, following the the state sales tax I, you know I think the indication is that it's up overall and uh, as you pointed out I think the the big box stores that uh, that we have induced to come to our area like Home Depot and Lowe's and, and those sorts of stores uh, now collect our zip code and that money is going to those zip codes not not to us uh, and I'm is there any indication that the legislature is going to make any changes? Because I, I know it has not been adopted uniformly across the United States. I don't know if they have. Uh, you know, we we certainly could visit with our delegation. Uh, you know, we I asked Mr. Sisson today to take a look at Sherwood and Little Rock and Maumel, perhaps Jacksonville, and to see you know how those cities are being impacted, so that we might have some feel. For whether there's some similarities, or uh, you know whether we may be unique for some reason, so you know he's going to look into that to to try to make a determination whether we might have any allies. Who we don't know for sure. I, this information was again, it's been conveyed to me about our month to month, but today we got a new month's payment. If I'm not yes, mistaken, yes, sir, we got January, which would be for November. We got it today, and it was significantly less than the last that that corresponding period a year ago. So I, you know, I, you know, we sure don't like to pull surprises, and uh, and we hope we we're coming up with better information, uh, you know, next time. Uh, again, the legislature's in session. Uh, we historically have not come out of a session with the legislature without having some mandates that, you know, that they expect us to pay for and uh, and and uh, give us the bill and pass the law. And, we're hoping that you know we all can be sensitive. Maybe we'll have some uh, good news. Now I can say, you know, at least in one respect, since we've kind of diverted a minute or two, that you know that President Obama's stimulus package, uh, and and this was reported in the paper, uh, it, you know, it, at least in terms of one allocation of formula, you know, our uh, uh, CBDG allocation may be up 25 percent. We're hoping that that is greater. Uh, Metroplan will have an additional twelve and a half million dollars in terms of, of uh, STP funds. Uh, again, there's efforts being made by because it's not final, but there's efforts being made by uh, local governments around the uh, country uh, to try to enhance that uh, allocation uh, uh, in terms of, of more dollars coming directly to not in terms of the total, you know, seven eight hundred billion dollars. But in terms of some of the ways that those monies are, are distributed to uh, those of us on the on the uh, uh, on the streets, to literally try to get them to main streets uh, in opposition to uh, you know other areas, and, and and we've been working very hard through staff and, and other uh, approaches to try to be ready to anticipate some of those categories and some of those projects that may be most beneficial to us and. And, uh, and are working to try to ensure that when uh, when the train leaves the station, that we're you know we're at least there with our suitcases, uh, hopefully on it. Uh, with that, uh, uh, you know, let's uh, go ahead and go to uh, number. Well, we can do number six uh, in conjunction with. Well, let's go ahead and do number six. Uh, it has to do with Alderman Witcher's uh, uh, legislation. Do you want to just read that by title? Uh, I'd, I'd like to. Have the whole thing read, please, Mayor. Okay. Ms. Whitby? Yes, sir. This is a communication from Alderman Witcher on behalf of Jody Carrera. Carrera, thank you. Uh, this is addressed to Bob Sisson. It says, Bob, I am bringing this wording with me. The Retirement Board of the Retirement System of the City of North Little Rock Non Uniform Plan or Plan would like to recommend to the City Board this restatement of its plan document. 
This restatement would be effective January 1, 2008. The restatement does not change the benefit structure of the non-uniform plan and therefore does not change the cost of the plan to the city. The restatement updates the language of the plan to conform with various federal laws that have been passed since the last restatement. Any minor operational, vari any minor operational changes to the plan have been affected as they were applicable to the best of the ability of the retirement board. The participants of this plan will not be impacted by this restatement. Jody B. Carrero, ASA, EA, Actuary, Osborne, Carrero, and Associates. Okay. And, and with that comment, uh, I'll make a couple comments, Mayor. The, Mr. Carrero is the actuary for, uh, for the retirement board. Uh, <clears throat> over the years, we have, uh, have made some changes in the plan uh, and basically this restatement is a compilation of those changes that have occurred over the years plus the new internal revenue service requirements. Is that a fair statement, Bob? So when we get, um, so, so I'm, I move that we accept and file this. Is there a second? Second. Uh, on the motion. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. Uh, let's go ahead and go down num number one. Uh, and is there Mr. Richardson or Mr. Holloway, uh, Hollowell rather, or anyone representing them? And oh, Keith, uh, go ahead and read this, uh, and then uh, uh, I'll give a brief explanation, and then uh, Mr. Richardson's here to uh, uh, answer any questions. Yes, sir. A letter dated January 14, 2009, members of the City Council. This regarding the Ridge at North Little Rock Phase 2, the Villas at Country Club, Vill uh, Valley Estates at Country Club Phase 1, Valley Estates at Country F Club Phase 2. Dear Council Members, upon your affirmed acceptance and filing of the attached letters, it is my intent to sign the letters and forward them to the Arkansas Department of Finance Authority. I remain sincerely Patrick H. Hayes, Mayor. Uh, let me get a motion to accept and file, and then we'll discuss it before we call it for a vote. Is there a second? Uh, motion made and seconded. Keith, if you want to go to the, the microphone, I think we all know a bit of the history of, uh, of, of this request. This is the way that uh, I started handling these. Uh, I did this for 10, 12, 15 years by simply signing these letters, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, we had an issue with regard to the conversion of uh, some of the apartments uh, on the just north of uh, Ridge Road Junior High School, which resulted in the need to relocate some market rate tenants. Uh, and the council uh, indicated, and it certainly was fine with me, that when it came to tax credits, which mandate that uh, certain uh, qualifications with regard to income uh, be a part of the leasing of these apartments uh, and this is uh, in, in, in total measure why tax credits are available because there are guidelines with re regard to income uh, that we bring this letter or the letters that we want to uh, sign to the City Council and make sure that the developer is here both to explain the project, the justification for it, uh, and uh, uh, answer any questions that any council member might have. With that, uh, Keith, if you want to introduce yourself, uh, uh, Keith Richardson uh, has been a developer, uh, has several complexes in the city, both uh, along Pershing uh, and, uh, and, and Maumel Boulevard. Uh, both market and and some tax credit and with that Keith I'll turn the exp explanation of this over to you thank you mayor Hayes um, <clears throat> once again my name is Keith Richardson with uh, Rich Smith development and we develop uh, affordable housing and multifamily in about seven states and we're located on Maumel Boulevard uh, the request I have for the council tonight is the second phase of the Ridge at North Little Rock, which is at Pershing and Scenic Drive. What we're asking to do, we own about 20 acres there. We developed 64 units, I guess about four years ago after the council uh, uh, agreed to, to write the letter before the application with ADVA, and it was approved. We were successful in building the project. And now we're asking for another 48 units, which is two buildings of 24 units apiece on that project. The other projects that we're looking to 
develop is on Counts Massey Road at the corner of Country Club and Counts Massey. I have around 20 acres there that is next to Frenchman Wood, which is a multifamily project that I've owned about six or seven years now that was uh, industrial zone property. And what we're wanting to develop there is a single building of 48 units senior, which is 55 years old and, and older that can live there. It's a gated community. And next to it is two 48 units. And in essence, the public will see it as one project of 96 apartments, but for application purposes with ADFA, it's broken down into two pieces of 48 and 48. And the projects are affordable, which is 60% of the area median income, which is the majority of the units. And I'll be glad to answer any questions that the council may have as far as the specifics of the uh, tax credit project. One of the things I know that uh, Keith indicated to me is, uh, is, is th th this is a, as a result of uh, one of the hurricanes at this additional allocation or something to that effect and uh, it is um, and the timing on this we have to act on tonight if I'm not mistaken it, it timing is very critical we got a space and time that if the projects are not approved in this year's round the area it's uh, Back when all the floods was happening in the, in the north part of the country, and then Blanche Lincoln was able to attach with all the hurt, or excuse me, all the tornadoes that, that we were having in Arkansas. So basically, about seven or eight counties in the state of Arkansas got attached that considered disaster relief, basically, and the government provided about three times the number of tax credits that they, that they normally do. And obviously, being in the mall mail with the area median income, the likelihood of ever getting a tax credit development out there is pretty pretty low so therefore we've got a space and time that we can actually get the projects awarded and funded yes mr height these are uh keith these are all below market rate uh units they are all affordable that is correct yes i mean normally we go a 80 20 uh, mix but with the credit pricing the way it is the economics just will not work without the credits on the units but Thank they you. are 60 percent of area median income they're not low low units like 20 or 30 percent they're no hud or anything like that they're strictly just 60 percent of area median income and they have to once again just because they want to live there doesn't mean we allow them to live there why don't you can briefly then refresh uh bring up the qualifications for, to get these for, especially for the new alder uh Absolutely. outside of the the tax credit once the tax credit's awarded it's still a private development we own it I, I, the debt is with the normal bank debt financing, so we're responsible. If the, if the thing goes bad, they come back to us. It's personal guarantees. So before, if somebody wants to come in and rent an apartment, obviously we do the, the normal credit check, and if the credit checks out, then before they can move in, we also do a, a, a criminal history background check. So all that has to check out before they're allowed to live in the, in the project. And then we... Uh, all of our projects, either the manager or the, the maintenance guy lives on site to really see what's going on in the properties. We've been developing affordable housing now for about eight years now. We've got about almost 3,000 units around the country, and uh, I guess about a little over 2,000 is affordable. Uh, if I remember, how many would you have uh, in North Little Rock? You've got, it, it, get, why don't you give me the number of units you have in North Little Rock and the number that are affordable? Just, I, I know that, that I've had a chance to be a part of, uh, of, of helping to open uh, some of the projects that uh, Mr. Richardson has been involved with, and they all are quality projects. And, something I think we'd be very proud it, of. It, the, absolutely. We're very proud of it. We're, you know, we're not a developer that comes in, builds it, sells it, moves on to the next project. Every project I've ever built, I still own. So we're in it. We, we manage our management company, Adam Allmel manages every one of our properties. But the, the project in North Little Rock is a 64 unit, which is, I think 20 of those is market rate. The, the balance of it is uh, the tax credit properties. Last year, we were awarded a 48 unit senior development. Uh, on purging also that uh, we haven't started construction we have every intent hopefully with the credit markets hopefully it's going to be soon but uh, uh, that's been done that was awarded uh, last year and in North Little Rock on Maumel Boulevard I have a 384 unit uh, market weight market rate property that's about 97 percent occupied right now it's been a very good property for us any more questions uh, on the mo I'm sorry no I'm I'm just curious in the senior developments that yes, you have. Uh, you said you've got a future one on Counts Massey, is it? Or? That's one of the requests that I'm asking the council okay, to sign the letter. That, that's the senior one, though. That, that okay. would be the senior, that's right. Okay, that's great. Okay. Thank you. On the motion? Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. 
Mr. Richardson, that, those letters uh, uh, will be uh, sent out tomorrow, and you'll get copies of them. Uh, come by and pick it up if you'd like. Uh, next item, uh, number two, Ms. Uh, Whitby. Yes, sir. A letter dated January 22nd, 2009, members of the City Council regarding the Briley Ridge Apartments. <laughs> Dear council members, upon your affirmed acceptance and filing of the attached letter, it is my intent to sign the letter and forward it to the Arkansas Department of Finance Authority. I remain sincerely, Patrick H. Hayes, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Uh, McDonald, yes. uh, you want to come to the microphone? Uh, you know, this is a, a similar uh, request. Uh, this is in, uh, I believe it's Ward 3. Mm -hmm. uh, it is along, uh, I believe it's adjacent to an existing structure, is that senior structure up there now, or is another one? Uh, I don't believe, no, it's the Wilmington Apartments there off of Donovan Briley. On the north side, mm -hmm. I believe? It would be to the east, I believe, and then the actual camp is there to the west. Uh, and a uh, similar request, uh, uh, you know, obviously I would assume, and I'm thinking I could answer the same for uh, Mr. Richardson, uh, that if this is simply a, a, a requirement, and, and for the benefit of our new council members, this is a requirement in order for them to seek these tax credits for construction of these uh, uh, below our, our below market uh, uh, rental rates. Uh, this is one of the steps that needs to be done. It's no guarantee that these credits will be given, uh, but it certainly is uh, is a step that has to be done, or they won't have a chance. There'll be uh, a number of requests that will be made for these tax credits. Uh, the Arkansas Development Finance Authority will decide who gets them. So by simply writing this letter, uh, it's not a guarantee that it'll happen uh, and uh, the tax credits will be sought and uh, some will be handed out, some obviously won't. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, McDonald, if you want to explain your project. Sure. Real quick, a little bit about our development company. We are based out of Springfield, Missouri. We're family owned. The owners have been in the affordable business since the inception of the program since the, since the mid-1980s. Currently, we have approximately 56 different developments. We operate in eight states. Uh, we also manage everything that we build and develop. Um, we also serve as the general contractor for uh, all of our developments. So they take a very hands-on approach to building these affordable units. Uh, the development that we're seeking here is a 50-unit community. It would be uh, strictly the 60% area median income also. Like the, the developer before, we are also seeking these special disaster tax credits. Um, this is kind of a, a very rare uh, bit that's happened in the history of the tax credit program, having s so many of them actually out there. Um, we're looking at doing a mix of one, two, and three bedroom units, uh, roughly 10 one bedrooms, 22s, and 23s. Uh, it's on 4.5 acres there off of, of Donovan Briley. And I'll be happy to answer any other questions you might have. Let me just ask real quick. I don't know that I got a motion this time, did I, Ms. Whitby? I think I forgot. Can I have a motion and we'll go on with it? So moved. Is there a second? second? Uh, all right, and in discussion. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Uh, the letter, uh, if you want to get a copy of it, it'll be available tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, next item. Uh, number four, a letter dated January 23rd, 2009. Members of the North Little Rock City Council, dear council members, this is to advise that I've appointed Chief Bob Malden as Fire Chief effective February 1, 2009. His annual salary will be $89,703.33. Your consent and cooperation will be appreciated. Sincerely, Patrick H. Hayes, Mayor. Let me, uh, uh, first of all, can I have a motion to accept and file? So moved. Uh, second. second. Motion made and seconded. Uh, Bob, you want to come up to the microphone? I think perhaps all of us know you. Uh, Bob uh, Malden is, uh, is, is a fellow I started, first started working with when he was president of the union, uh, yes, maybe sir. even before. Uh, 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 and Bob has been, you know, I'll let him add to his bi biography. Uh, he has been with the North Rock Fire Department a long time uh, and uh, is now Deputy Chief, Assistant Chief. Assistant Chief, uh, yes. Uh, Assistant Chief, and, uh, <coughs> and I can tell you that, you know, when, when Chief Malden and, uh, and Chief McCall, who I think we saw uh, is, has another two days uh, uh, or three days, maybe three the end days, of the week, yes, is, is when his official retirement goes into effect, uh, you know, both these gentlemen, uh, have worked well together, and it was a difficult choice last time uh, when I was uh, 
given the opportunity of, of selecting uh, the uh, fire chief and and uh, and it's not a difficult choice this time uh, chief Malden has uh, has been the number two at the fire department uh, uh, and has uh, really exemplified what I think is terrific leadership and I would feel like that leadership uh, and the tradition out of the chief and the assistant chief will be very well carried on by Chief Malden. Uh, let me let him make a comment or two and uh, then I'll uh, either either one of us will stand for questions and uh, then I'll ask for a vote. Thank you mayor. I, I haven't much to add to that. Been with the department going on 37 years now. Uh, I'm really excited about this opportunity and I, I hope to uh, make this department, continue to make this department the best department in the state, which we feel it is uh, without issue. Any council member? <coughs> On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Thank you, Chief. Now let's. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, you know, let's make sure we keep those fires put out. We will. Sir. All, all the fires at the fire department. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, let me. Uh, let's go to the special call. Uh, uh, we uh, uh, had a. Uh, 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 you know, obviously after the deadline, I appreciate the council members. I know this is somewhat of a first. Uh, you know, we became aware of this need uh, to address this issue uh, late Friday afternoon. Uh, our city attorney uh, was contacted. Uh, uh, I know uh, Alderman Gaines contacted me, and uh, and and we both, you know, obviously are very sensitive to uh, trying to help people make things happen uh, you know particularly when it appears to be non-controversial uh, and uh, uh, our city attorney was kind enough to you know put in some extra time as he's been doing of regular lately and uh, and we received this uh, via email in terms of notice uh, and 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 it's now before so miss Whitby I think on behalf of Alderman Gaines and I we'd like for you to publish the special call yes sir a letter dated January 25th 2009 honorable members of the City Council regarding special council meeting dear members of the City Council this is to advise that we have called a special council meeting of the North Lorac City Council for 705 p.m. on January 26 2009 at City Hall Council Chambers North Little Rock Arkansas the following will be on the agenda. An ordinance to reclassify certain property located on the west side of Counts Massey Road, approximately 500 feet north of Frenchman Loop Road in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, from the present I-2 to R-4 classification by amending ordinance number 7697, declaring an emergency and for other purposes, sponsored by Mayor Patrick H. Hayes and Alderman Kerry Gaines, respectfully submitted, Mayor Patrick H. Hayes. Uh, we would like uh, now for you to uh, read the uh, ordinance. Yes, sir. An ordinance to reclassify certain property located on the west side of Counts Massey Road, approximately 500 feet north of Frenchman Loop Road in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, from the present I-2 to R-4 classification by amending ordinance number 7697, declaring an emergency for other purposes. First reading. Uh, let me uh, uh, go ahead and refer. I think the council members see the map. This is uh, essentially, Mr. Richardson, I believe, a part of the re effort and request that you visited with us a little earlier in terms of uh, the uh, uh, desire to build multifamily, uh, and it is now I-2. You know, this generally is something we really, uh, we, we like our industry and we like our home. So uh, this is changing from industrial, which as you can look, if you see around, uh, is perhaps much more in character of what the, the developments have, uh, have, uh, have grown up around there. In fact, all areas uh, save uh, in an easterly direction is now uh, residential, if I'm not mistaken, uh, are moving in that, certainly moving in that direction. With that, uh, 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 Alderman Gaines, feel free to comment, and then we'll see if we can move this on by spending the rules. Well, Mayor, what I'd like to do, too, is, is I appreciate uh, our city attorney really taking on and doing this, and I did not know I would be on there, and I certainly want, to, uh, as a sponsor, I certainly want to add Alderman Baggett. Uh, on here to sponsor this. We respect Mr. Richardson, and that's why I'm really grateful for what you did and uh, our city attorney letting us call him. It's the first time I've ever gone to somebody's house that worked on a 
what, Saturday to find him. I couldn't find him, but anyway, Friday night. So we're grateful for that. But I want Alderman Bag to know that we certainly, if I know why I was going to be on there, he'd been on there with me on this. So we'll add him if, without objection. Without objection, uh, Ms. Whitby, if you'll reflect that uh, Alderman Baggett is a co sponsor. Uh, uh, and unless there are any questions at present, let's take it to second reading. And I assume that's a motion to spend the rules. So, so is there a second? Alderman Baggett? Second. Ms. Whitby, on a, mission, a motion to spend the rules. Cross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Move to spend the rules. No, we got to nope. read it now. Okay. Oh, oh, that's right. Yes, that's I need right. to read it. An ordinance to reclassify certain property located on the west side of Counts Massey Road, approximately 500 feet north of Frenchman Loop Road in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, from the present I-2 to R-4 classification by amending ordinance number 7697. Second reading. Can we go ahead and take it third and then question? Uh, Move spin the rules. Place on third reading. Alderman Baggett, do you second that? Second. On the motion to suspend, Ms. Whitby? Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. This is an ordinance to reclassify certain property located on the west side of Counts Massey Road, approximately 500 feet north of Frenchman Loop Road in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, from the present I-2 to R-4 classification by amending ordinance number 76, 97, third and final reading. All of them uh, one thing we need to amend the map into the minutes. I was instructed by Mr. Carter. The map that I had whenever I was putting this in was actually prepared by their engineer. The, the maps that we normally use are prepared by zoning, and, and those have been distributed. Everyone should have one in front of you. I know these, this is the type of map that you're accustomed to seeing with a rezone. I think that would be the one that's most appropriate uh, to I'll be take attached that as a motion. To so moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. On the motion to amend by inclusion this map uh, as an exhibit. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Move right. for adoption is amended. Second. Question. All right, go ahead. Well, I mean, I have no problem with that. I think it's wonderful. I think. My question is, why? what was the emergency? I mean, why did we have to do a special call? And, and let me did explain we miss that, Ms. Richards, I mean, if you want to come up. Uh, did they not get it in on time or what? Well, I think, well, you go ahead and answer it. I was actually reading the paper Friday afternoon about 4 o'clock, and I saw the article about the agenda, and it wasn't on the agenda, so the first thing I did is call the, the North Little Rock planning, and I, what's going on? And for some reason, uh, the engineer or whoever was supposed to talk to Mr. Gaines to get it placed, it just didn't happen. What, what's the emergency, though, is that he has to get his letter in by the first of the month. Yeah, two things has to happen. We, the, the property has to be zoned properly prior to submitting on February 6th along with the letter. If I don't have both of them, then the application is thrown out. And the next time the council meeting, I believe, is the 9th, which is three days too late. And with the, with the way the application pr process works, it's either it's all in by the due date or you can't submit and once again normally it'd be just well next year i'd come back and resubmit with this special disaster relief it, it'll never be a, another opportunity to make this happen okay i just know the last special call had the same name on it and that's why i was just wondering if if they were not getting it in on time because you know i checked around the city and everybody it wasn't our fault. I just want to. I, it wasn't y'all's fault. I, I was just as shocked as you were. I was just thankful. I, mean, I never read the paper at 4, 4 o'clock on a Friday. I don't know what I was right. doing before I left the office and <laughs> right. so on. So fortunately, it, it was meant to be, hopefully. Okay. Like I, said, I, I mean, I think it's wonderful. I just, you know, that when that name's popped up twice on both special calls, and it's, it's additional, you know, when the police have to go out and have us sign off, it's, we might want to consider a fee on some of these special calls. And, and I want to thank the council, and especially yep. Mr. Clark. I, I, right. mean, I really appreciate this because this means a lot to our company so well and and i know that that, that you know that, that i'm not aware of any of the city dropping the ball uh it was not uh, the city i know it was, that it was I, not the city at all when, when mr sure. richardson and i visited and i know i heard from mr gaines late uh friday afternoon or maybe even friday evening yeah, I know we hadn't discussed any legislation when we were talking about the letters. So somehow something happened that uh, didn't get by us, but we're, we're glad to be a part of helping. And we appreciate it. After the Planning Commission, we just, just uh, at least I assume that it just automatically went to the council at the next meeting. And so. Okay. And you know, by the way, the folks that are in charge of this, the ones that call me, are really. Uh, Incredibly competent. They just by absolutely. Mistake. I'm, yeah. That's why I'm not pointing fingers. I'm just have myself thankful on, we're yeah. here, and it's going to get worked out. Yes, sir. Absolutely. We're glad for you. Subject to the vote, which absolutely. Ms. Whitby, if you'll call the roll. 
Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Hype? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Hype? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Uh, we're encouraging people uh, who, uh, you know, everybody's welcome to stay, but the bridges and their overpasses are, uh, you know, it, it was coming down when I came in. So if you don't have to, I encourage you and those who may be somewhere other than home right now, I'd encourage you to head in that direction. Uh, it certainly looks like uh, the uh, weather is going to get worse before it gets better. Uh, with that, uh, Ms. Whitby, I don't have a note from you about anybody. Any, there's no scheduled public hearings. No, sir. Uh, and there's no list of people who want to talk on legislation. No, sir. All right, let's go to unfinished business. Uh, before I do, uh, I've got one unfinished business that maybe we can finish tonight. Uh, you know, y'all, uh, the, the old, uh, old council will recall that we uh, adopted uh, the creation of a memorial commission that uh, uh, a number of people have been named. Uh, to that, we have yet to name a chairman. I'll take that back. We named uh, uh, Alderman Bryan is chairman and of course uh, he was unable to serve or is unable to serve uh, and that therefore opened that up. Alderman Gaines spoke with me and expressed an interest and, uh, and I understand there may even be a nomination uh, so uh, if we're ready to deal with that that certainly falls under unfinished business. Uh, I, just, just a slight comment I think I was the alderman that uh, originally nominated uh, Alderman Gaines to that uh, chairmanship of that memorial uh, commission, and uh, he gracefully uh, 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 said no that night. But it's come to my attention that uh, he's kind of gotten uh, a change of heart and uh, wishes to be the chairman of that commission. So, if, with everybody else's uh, permission, I'd like to nominate uh, Alderman Gaines to be the chairman of the memorial commission. Second. Uh, it is, uh, is an opportunity, and I certainly uh, you know, look forward to the good work of, of that commission. Uh, uh, if there's any other discussion or conversation or comments. Uh, <laughs> I hate to do this. Uh, while, I, while I agree with this process, uh, I would hope that we could formalize this at our next council meeting. Uh, it, it, since, you know, number one, it's not on the agenda. Number two, we don't have legislation in front of us. But Let me just, yeah, and I, I understand, Alderman, the, the one thing that it seemed like when we first selected or first discussed Alderman Gaines that there wasn't any legislation. This was just simply after the adoption of the uh, legislation forming the committee that then gave the council the opportunity to do that. Now, this is a little bit different than normally how we, you know, how we obviously do things when, when the council has the opportunity to select. I don't believe we filed any legislation when Alderman uh, Bryant was selected. I don't think that went through a legislative act. Uh, I don't recall it being. Uh, and so, you know, I mean, to me, either way is, is, certainly, uh, is certainly, I think, proper for a council member to be selected. I think even when we well, maybe, maybe not. It seems like we've done it both ways in uh, in terms of selecting council members to serve on A and P. Uh, I think we've done it both ways, but I certainly think this is proper, and certainly that suggestion is valid. I most certainly, you know, I'm in favor of it, but I just want to make sure he's legitimate. <laughs> well, the president had to have it done twice, so if we do, we'll uh, do it again. My memory is not always perfect, but it seems like to me that my memory serves me correct that the the legislation that created the commission had a section in there that the city council would name a chairman. And we talked to Alderman Gaines that night about it. We even talked to Alderman Ross. She was over there shaking her head no. And then I think uh, Alderman Bryant accepted it or volunteered uh, to be the chairmanship, uh, chairman of that uh, commission. So it, I don't know if, I don't know, we didn't have any specific legislation naming Alderman Bryant, but it did say, though, I do think it did, I'm correct that it, that the city council is, would, would name a chairman for that. So. I, I agree with you, and, uh, and, and I think either way is fine, and certainly the council has an ability to do, uh, you know, we have an ability to do it either way, but this way is on the table now, and uh, with that, Ms. Whitby? Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. Witcher? Yes. 
Uh, go ahead and let's go to unfinished business. Yes, sir. RO905, Mayor Hayes. Uh, I'm trying to remember if we had uh, a uh, uh, when we agreed to set that over. Mr. Voles? Just for 30 days. I long. think we set that over for 30 days. Was it 30 days? Okay. Well, then uh, let's just. Uh, uh, is that what you were going to say, Mr. Bowles? Yeah. Okay, then that's fine. Uh, we'll hold both of those legislation, 0905 and 0906. You had, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Ordinance, ordinance 0902, Mayor Hayes. I'm going to hold that one more time. Okay. Ordinance 0904, Alderman Robinson and Taylor. Please call it. This is an ordinance establishing a grant program for neighborhood beautification ward, from ward drainage funds, and this is the second reading. We had um, an amendment the last time, and um, I don't know what the procedure is for that. I'm against the amendment, but in all fairness, we did have an amendment to this the last time. Was, was the, Passed did we that. amend it? No. No, no, we, no did we did not. not. We didn't vote. I held it. Okay. Uh, well, right now I've got something in front of me, so, you know, it, it, obviously it's the sponsor's choice. Uh, we read it, Miss. Just did we just read it, read it once? Uh, I, I just read it the second time. Second time. It's on the uh, it's on the uh, agenda, uh, or it's before us now for whatever action y'all might want to take, whether it be amendment or suspend the rules. I like to suspend the rules and place it on the final reading. Take it. Uh, that, that's really not debatable, so, you know, but we, we let folks talk about it in case they want to help them vote. Alderman Witcher? And I, I appreciate that, that opportunity. Uh, I think last time I expressed some concerns about the council members uh, providing money for, for the local groups for, for beautification and, and having to both be responsible for uh, approving those projects which is generally not a problem, but then getting contracts for those projects and then managing those projects, seeing that those projects actually occurred as the agreement dictated and making sure that the, the entity is qualified. And I, I think I indicated to the council that, uh, you know, basically we, are, we already have a commission that does all of those things. And it just did not seem prudent to me to put, a, put the council in that business when we had a, a commission that can do that for us. And, you know, if we want to fund projects through them, then we could do that. And that, that was the reason that I stepped forward with the, uh, the proposed amendment to, to, to provide this or, or to give it to the City Beautiful Commission and let them manage it. Uh, <clears throat> and and I, I, I also had some concerns about the, the source of the money and then where that money went. I, I think, Mr. Sissons, I hate to put you on, <laughs> on the spot on this. Okay. Uh, I think that spot needs to be shared by our city attorney, too. Um, okay. Uh, and, and I realize, you know, that Mr. Carter has drafted legislation that, that – uh, will perhaps uh, keep us out of the doghouse but but you know the money that we're proposing to utilize is capital funds money is that correct mr from Sisson? The, it's from the sales tax yes from sir. the sales tax okay and, and how can that sales tax money be utilized <laughs> that's a wide open question capital yeah it, it it's capital improvements or street improvements i think that's what our our uh election stated okay so would would banners hanging from poles be capital improvement projects i mean i'd have to look at exactly what it is that they're doing to try to figure out whether or not it would fit into uh, uh, okay the, into let, let me your, part, your point's let me, well taken let, let me see if i can partly answer it since i know i'll have some responsibility uh vis-a-vis -vis, uh you know how to enforce it and, and let me just tell you what my feelings are with regard to the enforcement. First of all, there are one, two, three, four, five, six stipulations. Uh, you know, the uh, funds, Alderman Witcher, I think you're talking about, indicates that funds, and this is a 
I don't know who actually stipulated this, uh, perhaps the sponsors, but it says the funds will be used exclusively for supplies and materials to improve and beautify neighborhoods. Uh, the way, no wages or salary will be paid from the funds. So the way I read that is that somebody's going to have to tell us, you know, right. either pay for it and we'd reimburse capital supplies or materials, which I think were capital. I mean, they're actual purchases. Uh, wages uh, and salaries are what I'd refer to as, as benefits. Uh, so, you know, I look at that uh, uh, subparagraph C is is by and large saying that supplies and materials are capital uh, uh, assets and sure seems like to me that's kind of the way we've been treating those funds uh, in terms of hard items is that Mayor, that's what we've intended is that we would basically have you know not to get too complicated with it but have a one page form completion where someone can say this is what the work that we intend to do where they can itemize out what the costs are and what they're soliciting funds for and then you know uh, submit that to their alderman and ask it to be uh, asked for permission to proceed with funding well one of the things that that I would uh, would assume uh, too and that uh, subparagraph B uh, reflects that uh, qualified recipients will be nonprofit organizations corporations organized and operating in accordance with state and federal law you know, then I would certainly charge either finance or some branch of finance uh, or some part of, uh, of our uh, staff for ensuring that when there's a request submitted before we disperse any funds uh, that they will have the proper certificates evidencing, you know, that B has been complied with. Right. Now, obviously, we'll have to establish a chain of expenditures uh, in order to ensure that the funds will go to supplies and materials, uh, you know, rather than for any other uh, uh, expenditures. Uh, that uh, subparagraph D indicates that it will be in public areas uh, or facilities and not private property, which is fairly spe uh, specified. And the grant will not exceed $1,000 per year, and that a grant can't receive, or grant recipient can't receive more than one. And, th and the last one indicates that the grant recipients must complete and sign an agreement uh, to be approved by both council members in the neighborhood where it's located and that the grant agreement be filed with the Office of City Clerk. And uh, I don't know that I see a whole lot of these coming down the pike, to be honest with you, number one. Number two, uh, you know, I would assume, and I'm going to, you know, make this assumption that the city, that the two council members who sign off on that would have some feeling of responsibility to uh, work with the neighborhood organization to ensure that the uh, uh, grant agreement is uh, fulfilled as indicated in the uh, in the form that's on file with the city clerk. Uh, you know, that's the only assumption at, at this point that I'm making with regard to council members. The other issues, I think, we in finance and uh, and uh, you know uh, and or other, whichever appears to be appropriate, you know, would take responsibility for ensuring that the remainder, remaining provisions be uh, uh, reflected. May, may I continue? <laughs> well, we're on, we're a motion to suspend the rules, but sure. Okay. And I, I guess the, the, other, the other thing is uh, under section one, item E, uh, that the grants will not exceed $1,000. Uh, I've been involved with a lot of projects. Uh, I think Ms. White has too. Uh, and it's difficult to do very much with a thousand dollars. I know Ward Ward One folks up on Park Hill have applied for was it five thousand dollars, Charlie? I'm fixed to ask Mr. Dan Scott here tonight. Yes, uh, for for a project, you know. So so how are you gonna you know how are you gonna fund that when you know they've asked for five thousand and your limit is a thousand? <laughs> well, first, so, uh, so uh, you know, and, and I, uh, okay, <clears throat> I, I really don't want to be involved with handing out money to groups with, without someone else looking at it. Uh, and, you know, I, I do not feel good about this. I do not think it's good public policy 
But whatever the council decides to do, that's what they're going to decide to do. But I think we have someone else looking at it in that, you know, once, you know, they submit the application and go through the process, you know, you have Mr. Sisson's office and you have us reviewing it. This thing, what we're trying to do is just kind of motivate uh, our communities in uh, taking some ownership and, and, you know, doing things in their neighborhood. These are many grants and the neighborhoods will know that the grant would go up to $1,000. If they got a $5,000 project, they know that this is not one to apply for, you know. So our thing is, and, and, and a lot of the projects may be things that we can approve anyway, you know, we can do anyway, you know. But this is just something that, you know, we put in place to kind of encourage neighborhoods, uh, and, and especially ours now, you all may not need anything like that, but when we look around in our community and the needs that are in our ward and some of the other wards is needed. And some communities and neighborhood groups need, you know, a little push, a little shove, and I think that this will do that. And if it doesn't work, if it does not work, we can always repeal it. Mayor, if I, uh, if we're I on that. the motion to spend the rules, so I, remember I, I, that. I understand. Okay. Uh, you know, and I, I guess the, the only point that I, I would make to you, Ms. Robinson, you know, basically you can do those things now without establishing this procedure. You know, again, I, I go back to Ward 1 a couple of years ago. Uh, they spent close to a quarter of a million dollars, maybe more than that, uh, up in the Park Hill area on beautification and flower beds and sprinkler systems. I mean, you know, it just, it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm sorry. So. It makes a lot of sense to us. All right. right now we're on the uh, uh, motion, motion to suspend. suspend. We're still going to get a chance for discussion. I mean, you can have it now. We're sort of, you know, if you want to do it now or you want to do it later. Is, uh, is Dan Scott here tonight? No, he is not. He's not? <laughs> I didn't hear you. I said no. <laughs> I'm make a couple of comments. Uh, in the last eight years that I've uh, served as uh, one of the Ward 4 aldermen, Murray and I have, without exception, I think we've spent every penny of our either sidewalk money or drainage money uh, on various and sundry projects uh, up in Ward 4. In fact, maybe a couple of times we might have gone over and had to borrow against uh, the following year's uh, uh, funding. But uh, we have always tried to uh, adhere or to comply with, uh, with uh, residents and the neighborhood request. One of the things that we have in our ward, and I'm not trying to compare our ward to any of the other wards, but we've got Lakewood that has not only a property owners association, but an improvement district. We have Indian Hills that has a community club. We have Overbrook that has a property owners association. And historically, the property owners associations in Lakewood and the improvement district in Lakewood do things to beautify their neighborhood without requesting. And in some cases, we have funded them. It's coming from Ward 1 and also from Ward 4. But basically what I really want to say is, is that we've kind of kept our nose out of the other wards business on how they spend their money. And uh, I think Murray and I are doing a pretty good job of, of managing our budgets on an annual basis. And we kind of like it the way it is. And, and I don't know if, if, if the other wards have got extra monies in their drainage funds that they don't need, I'd be glad to take them up and use them up in Ward 4, but I just don't see any need for this legislation. When we're already doing this, basically, when one of the neighborhood associations or one of the groups in our ward asks for some funding or something that is related to capital improvements, we've tried to bend over backwards to help them out. And I just don't think this uh, legislation is needed at this time. And well, when I get a chance to vote, I plan on voting well, no. Well, I just don't want it out there that uh, we don't necessarily need our money for drainage because Lord knows Ward 2, you know, has more drainage problems than Ward 4. So we don't want it, you know, it out there that, you know, we don't need the money. We do need the money. But the thing about it is we're just setting aside just a little money, you know, for our neighborhood groups, you know, to take care of some of their needs. On the motion to spend the rules. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. An ordinance establishing a grant program for neighborhood beautification from ward drainage funds, third and final reading. On the question? 
can I, is it? Sure. <laughs> I mean, everybody else. Well, I have several things. There's a couple of amendments that I would also like okay. to make in here. Uh, under E, uh, Thursday night at the Levy meeting, I had some questions on this. Some of the projects will not cost $1,000. They wanted to know, can we do more than one project, say two projects that equal $1,000, two $500 projects? And the way this reads is, is only one. So can we change that where it says uh, no recipient may receive more than scratch out that one grant per calendar year, change it to $1,000 per year? I'd like to amend that. And then also under B, the Why we do it one at a time? Oh, okay. All right, I'll take that as an amendment uh, that grant uh, that now uh, under E. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, mm -hmm. Grant award. Uh, where it says no recipient. Any, any, how do you how do you want to do that? Where it says strike the words one grant and insert one thousand dollars. Okay, no recipient may no recipient may receive more than one thousand dollars. What is it? $1,000. Okay. okay. Uh, that way, if they want to do four projects that total $1,000. I'll take that as a, as a motion to amend. Is there a second? Second. Uh, on the motion to amend? Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Baggett? Yes. Height? No. And Witcher? No. All right. Now, uh, Alderwoman Ross still has the floor. You got another amendment? Yes, I do. Under B. Where it says qualified recipients will be nonprofit organizations or corporations organized. Uh, can we add in there also or neighborhood association groups recognized by neighborhood services no. with bylaws? I mean, obviously, yeah, we can you do don't want to add that in there. Does, but that sure is a big, that's my, a big step. One of my things is we have a lot of neighborhood groups that, are, that do not have their 501c3. And they're not, not. I don't know that I've, that I've says it, it really doesn't have an excuse. It says me, it doesn't. will be a nonprofit organization but, or corporation. No. Well, it, it, you don't necessarily have to be. A 501c3 is a qualification that the Internal Revenue Code gives uh, corporate nonprofits so in okay. order to be uh, tax deductible if you made a contribution. Mm -hmm. This does not say anything about that. This okay. just simply says that it needs to be organized, and, and it's not that difficult. I forgot what the filing fees are, but it sure does show some measure of, of organization and authenticity. And I know I would, this is just me, and again, the council can do what he wants to, but I, I think we just register anybody down at Office of Neighborhood Services. So uh, the answer is you can do it. But the 501c3 is just simply a tax letter that the IRS. So we don't need to do it? Well, I mean, the neighborhood groups. Not, not in order to get a 501. I mean, this came from the neighborhood group in Ward 4, uh, the Northeast Lakewood. They do not have their 5013C, and so that's why they wanted to know do we qualify? They, if they're, well, I'll let the city attorney answer. Well, Go ahead. And, and the, the best answer I can give you is my communication with the sponsor whenever I was setting this up. And when I was uh, talking with Alderman Robinson about this, and uh, she clearly wanted to put in, in accordance with uh, state and federal law, because there's obviously under federal law you can be recognized as a 501c3 under IRS codes, but the state has its own nonprofit organization where you can file online as a nonprofit corporation. Right. The Secretary of no. State's office have where they can file as a nonprofit, and and, and I don't think it's there's quite know, a bit a of work of involved. I know the uh, Carrie, uh, Alderman Gaines. Was it the last group in Levy that formed that group? Didn't it take? Is wasn't it quite a while for them, or quite a bit of? Wow. It's quite a bit of work. It was. So I didn't. The know. amount of time to get a five hundred one c three letter takes a lot of time, well, and that's a little bit of lifting. But, that, it, it, but it we're saying you don't have to do that. They don't, you know, we had said, you know, you, we understood that some neighborhood groups were five hundred one three c's, but then we have some neighborhood groups that have filed with the Secretary of State's office their bylaws, and they're considered at the Secretary of State's office as a nonprofit. And I was thinking that a lot of our neighborhood groups, you know, uh, you know, had were filed with the Secretary of State's office as a nonprofit. It's not difficult, and, and I hadn't done this in a long time, it's not difficult to incorporate. There's a filing fee, you know, you have to get bylaws, there's certain representations, an agent of service. I mean, there's a certain amount of legitimacy and steps that you have to take, but, but you do not, 
have to be, a, this does not specify a 501c3. A 501c3, again, is simply Can what a corporation that, that is nonprofit has to do in order to get a letter to. that allows it to claim to its benefactors that it's tax deductible. So by just saying that neighborhood services recognized a neighbor, uh, neighborhood association group through neighborhood <coughs> services, that would not... They still I, I, I mean, I, obviously, you could do that. Uh, this council does have the authority to do that. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that 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 you know that we have absolutely no. I, I mean, come in and give me your address and a name to send a, a you know your neighborhood association to. I, I mean, I don't know that that there is any requirement other than the name and address, and you tell me the name of your association. So I know I would be more concerned about. You know, sharing public funds with someone that hadn't taken at least a minimal effort to incorporate their neighborhood association. Uh, but again, this council could do what you're suggesting. But with neighborhood, do they not file their bylaws with neighborhood services, or is that? I don't know, to be honest okay. with you. I don't know that there's a requirement that they do that. Okay, we can come back and amend it later well, if we find out. Well, yeah, I. I I don't like that amendment, Debbie. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I just like want to make sure that the the legitimate neighborhood groups are qualified. I mean, they do qualify. And and I I would. That we help them get to that point where they do. And okay. I would think All right, I'll that it. that's not that difficult to do. It's certainly a step that has to be taken, uh, and directors have to be reflected as agent of service. But it's certain steps that I think adds to the the legitimacy of uh, of, a, of a corporate name, and uh, and certainly. You know, an ability to recognize that th there are efforts that have been made in order to, to continue the operation of the organization. It's just not John Doe comes down and says, I represent, you know, B Street mm. Neighborhood Association. Uh, and so, I, but I mean, you could do and, it. I'm not trying to say. And it. I was just thinking that uh, a, a, a lot of the neighborhood groups have articles of incorporation, which is filed with the Secretary of State's office. Because usually, when you go to Dan Scott about forming a neighborhood group, you know they talk about bylaws and and incorporation and all. But this is what I had, you know, in mind for that. All right, you got another amendment? I, no, just several more questions. All right. Okay. Uh, when you were talking about that Park Hill had applied for, I believe, is it the City Beautiful funds? Is that what you were talking about? This does not take away from someone applying for City Beautiful. It's two completely two separate things. Ward 4 does not have anywhere near. I, did y'all have any neighborhood groups? I don't even know if, until last year. But I know Alderman Robinson and Taylor, they have, what, like 13 neighborhood groups. We have seven in our ward. We've got a lot of groups. Y'all have got, what, two now? Well, uh, and my you know, neighborhood. No, I got the floor. And they... You know, they and come I'm going to, to answer us. your question. They Overbrook has a property owners association. That's as close to a neighborhood association as you can get. Let me bring us back to each of us obviously have our own interest. We've discussed our own positions and, you know, not that we couldn't visit this, but why don't we try to get back to the legislation uh, if we could. One more thing. You've still got the floor. Okay. If you pull up the city of North Lark website on the where it says the welcome to North Little Rock under the mayors. Uh, if you click on there, number six is uh, the, our pros, uh, were, let's see, our 21st century includes strategies which support, and number six is encourage citizens to take pride in their community and an active role in this development. That pretty much says it right there. That's your words. Where so, are we, Ms. Whitby? It's been read three times, it's been amend amended one time. Okay, no more okay. amendments. Uh, no. Ms. Ross. All right. Question it, it, all right. The floor is open for either discussion or amendments. The floor is open. Alderman Height. I have just a, a question about yeah. Section 1, um, uh, letter F. It says grant recipients must complete and sign an agreement formed to be approved by both aldermen of the ward in which the neighborhood is located. The grant agreement will be filed with the Office of the City Clerk. If both aldermen in any given ward are opposed to this, does that mean that we have to participate in this grant program oh. or can we not just not recognize it in our ward? It's voluntary. You, you just don't, you just don't, I think either council, wait, I'd interpret it as unless this is signed off on by both council members, we're not going to give them any money. That's right. right. It's so voluntary. It Thank takes you. both of you. Yes, ma'am. They could exclude, you could make a G which says it excludes Ward 4. If you want to amend it in, I'll make you, you know. You Can we you vote? Did, you said you had no more amendments, Ms. Uh, Ross. <laughs> uh, 
I'll May we that. vote? We are. We do. We have a motion to adopt oh, yeah. on. Uh, well, move to adopt. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion to adopt? Just a question, though. All right. I was I was against this and I was for it, but I think what how will we and the bottom line in then what would we define a group as? Is somebody that came to us and said they're a group? First of all, to sign? based on the uh, we have based seven on, then in ours. So okay, we, well, well, you may or may not have seven. Uh, you know, if let's see, what is it? What's the, the what's the designation? Uh, uh, what know. number is it? I'm trying to remember. No, what's the number? What number is? What's the number, Miss? 00904. All right, 04. Uh, we are not going to disperse. I can tell you, we're not going to disperse any funds. I don't know why I can't find 04. Uh, unless. Held open last meeting. Oh, okay, 04. Uh, we're not going to disperse any funds unless it's signed by two, both council members, unless they show us articles of incorporation that uh, reflects that they are a nonprofit, you know, organization or a corporation organized in accordance with the laws of the state of Arkansas. You know that we'll figure out how to, you know, either reimburse or or to pay direct based on you know invoices or otherwise uh, the fact that the materials and supplies are the only thing we're going to pay for. You know that it's on public property uh, in accordance with the with the plan, and that it won't exceed a thousand dollars. And like I said, I, we can't make an alderman or two aldermen do anything, but we're certainly going to uh, anticipate that they'll uh, take a little supervisory responsibility and ensure that you know that whatever's done uh, is uh, is is done uh, uh, in a timely way. We're ready. Thanks. That's the way I intend to, to, to deal with it. Uh, yes, ma'am. Just for clarification, the way this is different than City Beautiful, City Beautiful requires a certain amount of man hours. Sweat equity. Right. And this does not have that, which does make it so people, maybe working people, would still have the opportunity to get some monies. That be otherwise I mean, I, I appreciate the way the council has, has looked at this, and, and I can understand, you know, the comments on, on from both viewpoints. Uh, you know, I, I think there are a lot of hoops that have to be jumped through before one of our neighborhood organizations receives these funds. It's not that significant, not that $1,000 is insignificant, uh, but that I think there is a certain tie-in and a certain you know, appreciation for our neighborhood organizations that we'll have, uh, and I think we'll get a lot more benefit, you know, from uh, the organizations being a part of this as well as being a part of other things in their neighborhood. And uh, and and like I said, while I understand both viewpoints, I think this is uh, on par uh, will be beneficial uh, to show the partnership that the city feels for its neighborhood organizations. Uh, and if there isn't any more comments, I'll call. Oops, I'm sorry, Alderman Baggett. Uh, as you know, I've been involved in neighborhood groups for like 17 years, and I'm a big supporter of them. And I feel like we've got a lot done doing that. And I was kind of torn like Kerry when this was first brought to me because Ward 3 needs a lot of drainage work. We've got a lot of drainage problems and stuff, but the groups need to be supported too. So. Um, you know, I feel like the, uh, you know, if it's going to be um, taken care of by the, you know, by the aldermen and they both have to sign off of it, then I'll, then I'll go along with it. I think we all realize that, that you know, that if there is a, 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 a negative uh, on one of these, it certainly might taint the program, and that's why I think all of us will work hard to make sure it, uh, it, it's reflective of the best of our neighborhood organization. One more question. Do we need to put a time limit on this or, you know, if our, because our drainage dollars fluctuate, last year when we only had, what, 55,000 or the year before 50,000, we couldn't, we wouldn't have been able to do this. So do we need to oh, I, make I, this I, renewable each year or when we know what our drainage funds will be? I just... Well, let me just put it this way. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I can't put myself in, in Alderwoman Robinson's, you know, shoes in terms of what is on our minds. But again, we come back, you know, to the part of the discussion has been that, you know, that what you know, is used here, it will not be used in drainage and, and other projects. So, you know, whether you got 5,000 or 55 or 155, mm -hmm. that would be up to the two council members in that ward to choose what they feel was appropriate. So I certainly wouldn't believe that, 
you know, that we ought to supplant that decision, those two council members certainly would have the opportunity to make that judgment call. Can we vote? On the motion. Cross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? No. Witcher? No. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? No. And Witcher? No. New business, resolution 0907, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. This is a resolution appointing Jackie Alexander to the unexpired term of Robert Jordan on the North Little Rock Planning Commission. I think we'd like to have a couple co-sponsors on that one, uh, Ms. Robinson and Mr. Uh, Taylor. That's uh, right. We'd like to co-sponsor. Without objection, uh, if you'll add them, Ms. Whitby, and call the row. Uh, do we have a, we need a motion. So moved. Yeah. Uh, now we have a motion. Ms. Whitby? Yes, sir. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. Witcher? Yes. Uh, Ms. Alexander is here. Jackie, if you want to stand up, let us thank you uh, not only for your upcoming service, but Jackie's been very active in uh, a variety of things uh, in Ward 2, and we're sure appreciative, uh, appreciative of you, uh, your past, your future, and uh, thanks for going on the Planning Commission. You're very welcome. Next item. Resolution 0908, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution certifying local government endorsement of Caterpillar Incorporated to participate in the tax pack program is authorized by Section 15427060 of the Consolidated Incentive Act of 2003. Can Someone. I get a motion? Is there a second? Second. This is something we regularly do. Uh, let me, uh, uh, you know, we had a little bit of a, uh, of a uh, we'll say, question and answer session today. Uh, you know, Caterpillar, unfortunately, on a global basis, announced a reduction of about 20,000 employees, and you know, obviously there were questions about the North Rock facility, and uh, and the answer, you know, is that it's uh, it's going to be one as they represented us earlier, a state of the art, and uh, and and they are fully committed to uh, moving forward, uh, even notwithstanding their uh, global restructuring with a reduction of employees. Uh, I think we feel very fortunate. Uh, to have perhaps one bright star in a fairly dark uh, sky. With that, on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Resolution 0909, Alderman Gaines. <coughs> a resolution directing the North Little Rock Public Works Department to prepare plans and specifications for the 2009 sidewalk and drainage program and advertise for bids. Move for adoption. Second. Second. Let, me, uh, let, let me just uh, uh, you know, make a couple quick comments, uh, you know, uh, and, and certainly this legislation is fine. Uh, I know that in the recitals of the legislation it indicates we've been operating under a bid we received in 2006. Uh, that's correct. Uh, and I know I've had an occasion to visit with the city attorney's office. Uh, you know, that is a perfectly you know, appropriate way for us to do business. I know we have continued to monitor the work of the contract uh, uh, individual that was awarded the contract. We feel the work has been exceptional. Uh, we feel the price remains competitive. You know, obviously, uh, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, anytime we go to bid, and uh, we're certainly uh, willing to very much to support this, there's always a risk that it'll come in higher. There's always an opportunity that may come in lower. I know our analysis has been up to this point that uh, it was good work for a good price and, uh, and felt like uh, we were getting uh, an exceptional uh, opportunity. I hope if this legislation is adopted uh, that that opportunity proves uh, that a new bid will come in uh, with an equally uh, good contractor, if not the same, uh, and perhaps even at a better price. Uh, you know, so I just wanted to make that little caveat. The way that we've historically done this, uh, and I know we've got a, a somewhat of an increase in our sidewalk program, is I had asked Public Works uh, and our city engineer, Mr. Smith, who's sitting out in the audience, to take a look at, and I would intend to do it the same way, to take a look at the uh, city and try to make a determination as to what would be the best sidewalk program that we could come up with and share that, not share it, do it in consultation with the council members of each ward, 
recognizing that there may be some sidewalk programs that could cross ward boundaries uh, and then uh, submit that program but that program is is obviously done in consultation with the council members of, of each ward with some type of, a, of an overall reflection of need that the uh, city engineering department along with public works tries to tries to make and that would be the way uh, you know irrespective of whether this legislation is adopted or not that we would operate and certainly if it is adopted that would be the way that you know, I would intend to move us forward once the program is passed on then you know we would obviously uh, take it to bid now these bids are by and large in unit prices so depending on what the bid was would be depending on how much we could do uh, with that do you I, want him to I have a project over there Alderman Baggett I have a project over there on that we're working with uh, Senator Huffman on and uh, as, as a highway commissioner of course I do want to take a bid on that but that really hasn't got anything to do with drainage and all that had you rather me hold this and let him do that I, all I care about is getting a bid going right now over there on some on uh, because people are looking quizzical, and you and I have talked privately, and you know, I just uh, if you'd rather me do that, that would might might be. I, I, I not necessarily. I think that you know whatever. I mean, it, it would seem to me that we, we either need to go out for bed for sidewalk work on on a, on a general basis, or we ought to go like we have you know in the past. And I so I I, I certainly wouldn't. I don't know that we need to sort of do a hybrid. I think but we're we doing a lot to, more now. We're doing a lot more work. It's up to a million dollars. I just thought we might look at it again. That's all. Bottom line is. So let me ask you this question then. Right. Is, is this is this advertised for bids for the both the sidewalk program and the drainage or just the drainage just program? Just the sidewalk. I think this is just sidewalk, isn't it? Isn't this legislation just sidewalk? I think it's sidewalk and drainage. Yes. I, you know, I know. I know that. Yeah, it makes it a little bit more difficult to do both of them. To be honest with you, I thought it was just sidewalk, but it. it I mean, the drainage projects probably each ought to stand on their own. Uh, now the sidewalk program does have some tendency to lend itself, you know, to a, a uniform bid. But I don't know, Mr. Uh, uh, Mike, Mr. Mike Smith, because uh, each of these drainage projects are pretty unique. We've historically done drainage projects, you know, separately, but we've also historically, and, and to the contrary, we've done sidewalk program with uh, with with uh, with a general bid. Is that not correct? Uh, in uh, to give you just a little bit of history, in 2004, the sidewalk program, the, the sidewalk unit price was $2.80 a square foot. It went to Nathaniel Sane. 2005, we put it out to bid, and it was $3.25, and it went to Synergy. 2006, we put the sidewalk program out, and it was $3.50, and it went to Synergy. In 2007 and 2008, we didn't have a sidewalk program per se. Uh, check Smith, just hold on just a second. You're, you're not answering my question. My question is, historically, we have done our sidewalk program with one company under one bid proposal. With our drainage projects, we do them by and large project by project. Absolutely. Okay. Case by case. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Yeah, you know, so I guess if I got a request, Alderman, that that would probably be part of it, and I have to take a look to see how that might be amended uh, and whether we do that now or later is just up to Mr. Carter or you but but I, I would not think that we would want to I don't think we can go out for a general we wouldn't it'd be difficult to go out for one general bid for all of our drainage now it wouldn't be that way for our sidewalks yes sir to hold this. Uh, okay I want to hold it let's just hold it and see if we can straighten that out then. the only thing I could add is that in checking and wanting to know whether you think the price is going to go up or down I checked with the city of Little Rock today just to see what their current price is for sidewalk, and they're getting four dollars a square foot. And we're paying three fifty. Three fifty. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe we ought to think about it. Okay. Uh, all right, that'll be held. Next item. Ordinance 0905, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. An ordinance waiving formal bidding requirements for electronic ticketing software and hardware for the North Little Rock District Court's Second Division appropriating <coughs> funds. First reading. Uh, let's go ahead and take it to third reading, and then I see Judge Morley there. I wondered why you were here, and I've now just the light bulb just turned on. I moved. 
in the rules and place it on the second reading. Second. <laughs> on the motion. Cross. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Agate. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. An ordinance waiving formal bidding requirements for electronic ticketing software and hardware for North Little Rock District Court Second Division appropriating funds. Second reading. Go ahead and take it third reading, and then I'll judge. If you want to meander up here, uh, spend the rules place on third reading. Second. On the motion. Second. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Faggot. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. An ordinance waiving formal bidding requirements for electronic ticketing software and hardware for North Little Rock District Court Second Division appropriating funds. Third and final reading. Okay. Mayor, I'd like to request that uh, Judge Morley explain to us in detail each one of these line items. <laughs> they do. Well, <laughs> you, you know that uh, my chief administrator, Judy West, actually has that all committed to memory. I'm here to talk about the generalities. Okay. Uh, let, let us ask you the generalities and then Alderman Height, you know, you're free to use my office up until whatever time after this is over with to go through <laughs> item by item. And if, it, uh, if you find a real flaw, then I'll be happy to help you address it. Uh, uh, Judge, if you, uh, first of all, welcome, and if you Thanks, would, Mayor. if you'd be uh, uh, so kind as to kind of explain to us how this is going to help us. The general background of this is that, and you, one of the first questions you might be asking yourself is why would the court be paying for this instead of the police department? The principal reason is because we coordinate with the police department very, very closely with respect to the docketing of citations issued on traffic and especially in the traffic division because there's so much paper that flows between the police department and the courts. Additionally, we have some specific uh, funds for technology that we have available to us that's technically set aside in our budget uh, and this is uh, one of the reasons why it behooves us to go ahead and work with the police department. Additionally, it saves, it, it makes us operate more efficiently and may in the future save us additional personnel from the standpoint of docketing. Basically what this software does, it coordinates and is compatible with our present docketing software and when an officer writes a citation actually what this does is it's the hardware and software for a, a startup program uh, for instance two of the motorcycles and three of the cruisers uh, would have this software and they can basically when they come in they can download this and it automatically dockets this the information from all the citations that have been issued off of that particular piece of hardware that that officer has uh, that speeds things up significantly. It also allows people to come in and pay the next day. Sometimes uh, you have officers who cannot get the uh, paperwork in and someone will come in the next day and we don't have the paperwork, you're going to have to come back and pay later. Additionally, it looks like the Arkansas State Police is moving toward this type of system as well. And it, we have more of a problem with state troopers coming by and, and turning citations in after people have already tried to pay them. As you know, it's, it's often kind of irritating to receive a traffic citation. And then if you go down and try to pay it and the paperwork has not been turned in by the trooper, that's even more irritating. Uh, so it simplifies that matter. And also it is, we're asking for the bid waiver because there are not that many entities that create this type of hardware and software there and to be compatible with our software this is probably the only one it's also the type that the state police are looking at so it's it's likely that this is going to be kind of evolving around the state and it'll be more of a standardized type more kind of a pilot project for this type of uh, hardware and software I talked to Judy West, and one of the things. <laughs> oh, no. She knew who to talk to. Uh, one of the things, too, though, was uh, by the tickets being handwritten out, how many copies is it? Five copies on a ticket? Uh, that's that correct. And, and then and trying to read the writing. The driver, the, time. Gets, the driver gets the bottom copy of the citation, and there is some confusion. It doesn't happen very often. But, and we've got certain officers who I know you might find this hard to believe, their handwriting isn't that good. Right, but so on the bottom one that the, that the violator receives, it's often difficult to actually uh, read what the officer has written on that citation. Yeah. 
Another thing on the the mag uh, was it the mag strap reader that can read the driver's license too. She said the turnaround time when the officers are actually stopped on the street that that'll increase their time back on the street. Right? Is that correct? It's That's, very it's very efficient. It's yeah, it, the the magnetic stripe on the back of your driver's license can be run through this just like a Visa card does at a retail outlet, and it will fill in a great deal of information on the citation. And they have portable printers in the cruisers. They can have larger ones. Uh, smaller handheld printers that print about the same size as a regular citation off of the motorcycle units. Another thing I, was, I know some code uh, departments, not ours, they have the handhelds also, and that's why I was asking her if that we could incorporate that and also animal control. And she said that, you know, that it may be possible one day to incorporate everyone into. It speed everybody's time it's, up. It certainly is. It's it's more efficient at this point in time to do police because right. of the volume levels. But I know Little Rock, you know, in Little Rock, the code, uh, the Public Works Department writes parking tickets. And I know we don't have a parking ticket business like Little Rock does, but they do use something similar to this in Little Rock. So, mm. okay. cool. any other questions? No. All right. Thank y'all. Mm -hmm. uh, I also wanted to thank the administration, the city council, and the city attorney's office for the uh, front and side yard parking ordinance. I sincerely appreciate that on a personal level. Thank you. Uh, we got a couple council members that carried that uh, you know, banner very aptly. Uh, Thank and, you. And, and, and With the process of getting that implemented on his street also. So. Mm -hmm. uh, where are we, Ms. Whitby? It's been read three times. Uh, do we have a motion? No, sir. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. And the emergency Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Ordinance 0906, Alderman Witcher. Call it, please. An ordinance restating and amending the current City of North Little Rock, Arkansas pension plan adopted by ordinance number 7589, first reading. Move to suspend the rules and place it on second reading. Second. Second. On the motion. <laughs> Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? <clears throat> yes. And Witcher? Yes. An ordinance restating and amending the current City of North Little Rock, Arkansas pension plan adopted by ordinance number 7589, <clears throat> second reading. Move to spend the rules and place it on its third reading. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. An ordinance restating and amending the current City of North Little Rock, Arkansas pension plan adopted by ordinance number 7589, third and final reading. Do we have the exhibit attached? Yeah, we need to attach the exhibit. Uh, I hear that is a motion. Yes. And is there a second? Uh, let the record reflect all, whatever Alderman Heights waving is what we want to attach. It's uh, the retirement <laughs> system of the city of North Little Rock, Exhibit A. Right. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Uh, move, now, move for adoption is amended. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. In Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. In Witcher? Yes. Ordinance 0907, Alderman Robinson and Taylor. Please call it. An ordinance granting a conditional use to allow a truck sales and repair business in a C4 zone for certain real property located at 3815 East Broadway in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. First reading. Move to suspend the rules placed on the second reading. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. An ordinance granting a conditional use to allow a truck sales and repair business in the C4 zone for certain real property located at 3815 East Broadway in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. Second reading. Move to suspend the rules place on the third reading. Second. On the motion. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. An ordinance granting a conditional use to allow a truck sales and repair business in the C4 zone for certain real property located at 3815 East Broadway in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. Third and final reading. On the question. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Ordinance 0908, Alderman Baggett and Gaines. Please call it. 
This is an ordinance allowing special use for a dance studio in an I-1 zone for certain real property located at 8608 Riverwood Drive in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. First reading. A motion to suspend the rules in place on the second reading. Second. Motion. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. Butcher. Yes. This is an ordinance allowing a special use for a dance studio in an I-1 zone for certain real property located at 8608 Riverwood Trail in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. Second reading. Motion to suspend the rules and place it on the third reading. Second. On the motion. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. This is an ordinance allowing a special use for a dance studio in an I-1 zone for certain real property located at 8608 Riverwood Trail in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. Third and final reading. Let's have a question. That's your question. Uh, Mr. Voles. Yes, sir. Dance studios normally involve lots of children, correct? Yes. Was the uh, safety of all of the uh, kids going to the dance studio taken at the top of the priority list? That is an area that's an industrial area out in Maumelle, correct? It is office and, and light industrial. It's off uh, immediately west of 430 uh, across from the fire station. It is a mixed uh, zone. Uh, the zoning is of a mixed nature in that area. It was discussed at the Planning Commission, though? I see yes. where you had nine affirmative votes. We did. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going against. I just just wanted to make sure that, that was brought up right. during the discussion in the. This was zoned back, you know, 30 years ago for um, office. They didn't really know what was going to become of it, and it's been pretty much office. We did. We did recognize that um, some heavier industrial could happen in the area, and you know they you know need to be aware that they are in a light industrial area. Some of the lots are not developed. Uh, to the west of this building. Okay. Thank you. To adopt on, I'd always like to do that if we pause in our deliberation. So do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the motion uh, to adopt on third and final. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? <clears throat> yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Concludes new business. Any council member? All the women Robinson? I have a couple of announcements I'd like to make. Uh, this Saturday on the 31st at Perfecting New Life Church, we will have a planning session, uh, Alderman Taylor and I, with the neighbors from Bering Cross. That's from 9 o'clock until 10.30. That's on the 31st. Uh, planning will be there, uh, as well as some business uh, people from the community will be there. Also, on the first Monday night, in February at the train depot, 1200 East 4th Street. Alderman Taylor and I will be meeting with the Dixie community regarding revitalizing the Dixie community. We will have planning there, neighborhood services there, as well as others. So we're just announcing that and inviting people to come out. I want to thank the city for giving me the opportunity to go to the Municipal League Conference, and many others did too. I'm a freshman alderman, and, and everything was exciting to me. And, and I just want to say that I found out some really interesting things, not only for me for now, for later on. Um, I think there's some real advantage in talking with people from other cities around Arkansas. And uh, the one thing I want to just leave you with is uh, the speaker on Wednesday night, you know, he, many of you were there, he spoke on trust within gaining trust and building trust within the city and the three main components of trust that he said we needed to have consistency, uh, we had to have compassion, and we needed to have character within ourselves and, and I just thought that was really good and thank you for the opportunity to attend, to attend this conference. We, uh, we're very supportive of, uh, of both you know, the National League of Cities and, uh, and the uh, Arkansas Municipal League and we appreciate you know, any council member who wants to spend time. I think it's extremely beneficial. And, uh, and you know, a, a lot of what we do here, we uh, uh, bring back from other jurisdictions who've tried, uh, succeeded. Some failures are obviously always shared with us, and uh, it helps us avoid the potholes and uh, enjoy the uh, benefits of those who have beaten pathway before. So, you know, again, I want to take the opportunity to encourage council members to be active uh, in uh, both organizations. The uh, uh, 
the uh, uh, Arkansas Municipal League and their two principal meetings or committees. If, uh, if anyone wants to express an interest in you know, any committee, there are a number of, of things that they do, uh, uh, which their headquarters, we are proud to be the host of the headquarters just down the street. And they have a variety of seminars and workshops. Uh, so we'll try to make sure that all of you get notice of those uh, and you know, are, are appreciative and supportive of anybody's uh, participation. Alderman yeah. Hyde. I'd like to echo uh, uh, Alderman White, Alderwoman White's uh, comments about the Municipal League. I had the opportunity to uh, participate in the uh, Wednesday afternoon, all day Thursday. Uh, Thursday afternoon, I had something come up at work, and then all day uh, Friday. and. Uh, the sessions about uh, what the league can do for you on Wednesday afternoon was certainly great about uh, where we can get possibly get grant monies and fundings from various and sundry agencies that are participating with the league. And then their trade show, uh, their little trade fair, whatever they have on Wednesday afternoons and all day Thursday is, is quite informative. We've got a lot of information there. And then they went over on Friday. But on no, Thursday afternoon, they went over all the legislation that the league has an interest in uh, in the current legislative session, and, and uh, they had several speakers there. It's very good. It's very, very, very good. The other thing I want to bring up is uh, I don't know if y'all rem remember this or not, but we have or had a member of the Water Commission as an ex officio member. Uh, Alderman Bryant was our representative from City Council, and with him not uh, being on City Council any longer, we've got a vacancy. Uh, as far as the ex officio member of the water board or the water commission and uh, I know it's not on the agenda, but uh, uh, I'm I'm certainly put my name up as, as a representative and if anybody else wants to uh, Run against me for that. They're welcome to do it But uh, I'm volunteering to be the ex officio member of the water board uh, Whenever the legislation comes up on City Council mayor. Well, I think all of us are going to wait to see what the campaign promises are <laughs> and what kind of goodies we get uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Uh, any other council member? Uh, let me uh, let me mention. And of course, this is you know certainly in light of the weather, not uh, really a, a, a timely uh, opportunity. But maybe we can take advantage of it. This is our Jenner Restaurant Week, uh, starting today and going through Friday, uh, 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 or the 31st. I assume that's Friday. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the popular things we've done before, uh, hopefully the weather won't be too much of an inhibitor uh, as we go through the week. And, uh, and please uh, take an opportunity and, and support our downtown restaurants. Uh, uh, City Attorney. Uh, Mayor, I just want to add two, uh, two quick points. One was that uh, apparently we were leading the curve in terminology. I know most uh, lawyers heavily rely on Black's Law Dictionary. You know, they've got their most recent uh, additions out with terminology. And uh, now in their terms, they have not only alderman, but they have alderwoman, which was not there before, because alderman's considered to be a generic term uh, for either gender. But also there's alderwoman and alder person. And I thought that was interesting that we were ahead of the curve. We've been using the term alderwoman pretty frequently around here. Uh, so I'm just proud that the rest of the legal community is catching up to us. Uh, well, why don't, why don't you share that with Mr. or Ms. Black and let us know we appreciate it. I'll let them know. Uh, who signed up? Uh, well, before that, though, did you want to mention uh, Chief McCall's retirement? I thought I had. Uh, the, the date and the time? I didn't know if you had mentioned that part. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, the retirement event. Yeah, yes, go ahead. Yes, okay, sir. I'm uh, sorry. You're Chief right. McCall's we mentioned his retirement, but yes. nothing. Chief McCall's retirement uh, party will be Friday afternoon at 2 o'clock at the Hayes Center. And, of course, I think you've all got some invitations, but if you haven't, please come. He would be honored to have you all there if you're able to come. Right. And, yes, I have two cards. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, wait. Go ahead, Alderman. Go ahead before we... Well, something came to mind while ago is that if we do have uh, committee vacancies, commission vacancies, it would seem like you disappointed me to a commission, then I would be the last person eligible because we would want to share these, I would think. If someone wants to, not, nobody wanted, I guess, came forward for this one, but what I'm saying, if someone's on, if uh, Alderman Ross is on the planning commission, she's not but adjunct to that, then her and I would be in it. To, you know, I would think we ought to be ineligible and share all this around the table. 
That's only my thought. And we haven't done anything in writing, but the first time we may have others, she suggested a budget committee at one time. And then it looks like we would pick people from our group that's not on something else that wanted to be. That's all in my thoughts since we might have a first contested race I've ever heard of for something on the city council. <laughs> well, it depends on who does the best campaign. Yeah, right. We're going to keep, keep an eye on it. Um, two, two have signed a card if you'll call their names and uh, we'd sure uh, like to listen to their comments and, uh, and then if we uh, adjourn real quickly, everybody please be very safe in going home. Uh, you know, the, uh, I don't know what the weather's done. I don't know that it's uh, improved any. So with that, Ms. Whitby? Well, I just found out we've got two more that just got cards. If <laughs> All right. Uh, let me let me just make sure that you know, you know it, it, we're gonna. But when we call for the public comment, and we'll we're still still learning. But when we come for the public comment from now on, you know, if we call for it and you don't have a card, then you know, I'm sorry, we're gonna move on. Uh, you know, we're we're gonna deal with that. Any time before we call public comment, if you have a card signed and up by Miss Whitby, then we'll certainly recognize you. But if not, from now on, you won't be recognized. So all we're asking you to do is just simply before we call for public comment, you have a card and have it signed and with Ms. Whitby, then you'll be recognized. With that, Mr. I, apo I apologize, Mayor. I didn't want to interrupt Ms. Whitby in the middle to kind of keep records, so I apologize. I will make sure I do that next feel time. Feel free to interrupt because we just, <laughs> you know, feel free to interrupt. Just She has a stack of cards there, and all we need to do is have those uh, under her nose before we call public comment. It's an intimidating thing, and I apologize. Um, I'm Scott Miller. I'm here representing uh, Vice President, Unified Neighborhood Coalition. I think what you've done tonight with the neighborhood grants is a wonderful thing. I do think you've kind of overlooked a little thing in the qualifications. Um, as we've talked about most neighborhood groups started off as crime watches um, they were not incorporated they were nothing but a loose-knit group uh, many of them then formed neighborhood associations the only requirement for that was a set of bylaws that was then filed with neighborhood associations with it with uh, department of neighborhood services with dan scott's office to my knowledge there is possibly one, maybe two groups that will meet the qualifications currently in that current one. One is Neighbors United for Levy, which I believe is a 501C currently, and possibly the Glenview group may or may not. I'm not even sure about them. Argenta, for example, is not registered with the Secretary of State. Scenic Hill is not registered. Levy Improvement Movement is not registered. Um, Lakewood group is not registered. Um, Amboy group is not registered. Rose City is not registered. Um, to be a 501C, it's a $300 filing fee. Many of these groups do not, and I know they don't have to be, but it's a $500, $300 filing fee. The city attorney's office has been very gracious in working with many of those groups, but it's still a filing fee that many of them don't have. And the Secretary of State's office has certain reporting requirements that many of them have not done over the years. So you're gonna probably need to send Dan Scott out to make everybody up to speed on this because I think you've written an ordinance that only right now has an effect on maybe two neighborhood groups and I'd appreciate if we can just send Dan out to these groups to make sure they're aware to get this done because I think it's a wonderful thing it's great to empower the neighborhood groups thank you uh, Bobby Taylor Mr. Taylor good evening mayor and council members I'm not here tonight to hurt nobody's feelings, step on no toes or ruffle no feathers, but if I do, I'm not going to apologize because this has been going on for a long time. And I mentioned at last council meeting to you, Mayor, I mentioned Tom Wadley's name and also Mr. Carter's. I've got wrote on the top of this piece of paper, who runs the city of North Little Rock? Mayor, I think you do. But the problem that I have is every time I bring something up that it's on the records that it's illegal to do, I have talked to Mr. Carter, I have talked to Mr. Wadley, and I have talked to you, Mayor. It's dropped. I don't know what the problem is. If I have done something personally to the city, myself, don't make the rest of Rose City suffer for it. Deal with me. I don't know where this started several 
months ago when we was down at uh, a school educational building when this thing here was being redone. And I come down there and I asked for Robert, uh, John Nolan, some more authority to where he'd have more power to do some of these issues out there. And when I went outside, Tom Wadley was standing out there and I spoke to him. And he got on me and wanted to know why I come down there to bombard John. I said, I didn't come down here to bombard John or nobody else. I just come down here to get him some help because you're not giving him any. And I talked to him here a while ago before I come to you over this. And I told him on this dumping, hauling in, and that stuff is still going on. Uh, I told him out here in the front of this building that if he didn't do something about it, I was going to you. He said, go ahead. So I brought them pictures down here. And I asked you if I could have a couple of minutes of your time, and you said yes. And I showed you them pictures, and you told me that you was going to check with code. That was the end of it. They never got back with me. And all this hauling and dumping stuff out there, dumping it on other people's property, every time I'd talk to John about it, he said, well, I'm going to have to check with my boss. Well, about a few months ago, I got a ticket for not having my seatbelt on. And I don't remember that officer telling me that she was going to have to check with her boss before she'd give me that ticket. And that was the only thing I could, could hear every time I'd put the pressure on the code enforcement. I said, well, we're going to have to check, see if there's enough evidence. I have brought y'all tapes after tapes, pictures after pictures. And I give Mr. Carter a picture here not too long ago of some chicken that was dumped over the fence, not on my property, but on the other people's property behind me back there. And uh, I called John, told him about it, and he said, well, I can't, I can't go on that property to look at it. I said, you can come on mine. You don't even have to get out of your truck. You can just drive through the gate and drive out there and look at it. There was nothing done about it. At 4700, the lady lived there. She brought some charcoal out of her barbecue grill, brought it across the street, and dumped it on y'all's property where I have to mow. I don't have to tell you what a lawnmower will do when it gets hold to one of them charcoal briquettes that's not burnt up. It's just like a rock. Two days later, she brought a pan full of grease over there and dumped it. I told John about it, and he said, well, he said, really, there ain't anything you can do about it, you know, but talk to them. I said, I'll handle that. So I went over there and told them. I said, I don't know where you know it or not, but when you went over there and dumped it, you come down here to the house, and I said, I'll show you what you've done. I said, no, I don't want to see no more of it. You can dump it on your side if you want to, or you can put it in the trash. I don't care what you do with it. But ever since I've been a president of the Rose City Crime Watch, it's been over 20 years. In fact, I started it. About less than a year ago, I resigned. And some more people has took it over and chained it to Rose City uh, Neighborhood Association. And I have always tried to do what was right. I've always tried to make it a better community. And I'm going to continue to do it. Am I talking to the wrong people when I come down here to talk to y'all? That ought to be easy answered. If it ain't, I need to find out who I need to talk to. Because if I don't, I'm going to be down here every time this place is open and tell y'all this same story. It'll be just like them confounded barking stinking dogs behind me. You finally took care of them after about four months. There's all kind of problems that we got out there. We've got hedge bushes planted on the corners of the street to where you can't see unless you stick your nose of your car out in the street. We have the stop sign. The other people don't. We have to go through the Act of Congress to get them cut. And I hope, Mayor, you've said several times, we, oh, we can only go east. We can't go to Jacksonville, we can't cross the river, we can't go to Momel. The only place we got to go is east. Why not give us just a little bit of help to clean this up out there as we go? We always have a cleanup once a year, and it wouldn't be near as hard if we could get just a little bit of cleanup in the meantime. I would like to see a code officer. I know all of y'all has probably been on a farm 
once or twice in your life. I would like to have a, a code officer out there that didn't have a stiff neck where he's looking straight ahead, or he had mule blinders on to where he couldn't see anything on either side. Or I would like to borrow a pair of y'alls to where I wouldn't have to look at this stuff when I come in. Mayor, I hope you can help us. But I'll see you in two weeks. Mr. Taylor, I'm sure we'll look forward to two weeks because we heard not, we, we're going to do our best, but I'm sure we'll 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 have some issues that we'll be visiting with you in a couple of weeks. So we we'd miss you if you weren't here, Mr. Taylor. Next item, next one. Uh, Bill Wagley. Bill Wagley from Handy Pantry and on Eureka Garden Road. Back in March, we received a letter from the North Little Rock Community Planning uh, about the uh, ordinance requiring dumpsters to be placed behind screens. And they gave us to the 1st of January to, uh, com to uh, comply by the ordinance. We, uh, we had ours complied with by the 1st of January. And there's only three or four in, in the Rose City area that have, has complied, and there's several hundred over the rest of North Rock that, that haven't complied. And I just wonder why, you know, I assumed that, that uh, the 1st of January we're supposed to do it, but haven't done, and the rest of them haven't. You know, there, we're working out a procedure right now, and it's certainly a fair question, uh, and, and we respect those and, and very much appreciate those that, that have, uh, and we intend to move uh, toward uh, obviously giving a large number of those that have an, an opportunity, but it's going to be a reasonable opportunity, and those that don't, then we'll uh, uh, operate under accordance of the uh, legislation and uh, begin uh, issuing fines uh, where appropriate. So, you know, you you are you are to be commended, and uh, and you know because of the number of folks that haven't, you know, we're trying to work out what we think is the re most reasonable way to to move forward with this. But rest assured, we intend to move forward with it and do it in a very uh, concerted and diligent manner. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Matthew Richard. Yeah, my name is Matthew Richard uh, here in Argenta. Uh, I'd like to start first with a suggestion uh, for the final public comment of, of the night. I think that it'd be nice if the forum was over here. Some of us work. I work normally till 8, but because of the road situation, we let out early. I went home, watched part of this proceeding on TV, and heard something that made me put the coat back on and get back in the truck and come down here. Now, I was raised not to step in front of the altar, so to speak, in the middle of, of proceedings. and. I feel uncomfortable doing that. Card over here for final comment would be more appropriate. Some of us are at home before we realize we have something we must say, which leads me to my comment. I'd like to commend Alderman Ross um, for asking the question about the special call and the emergency nature of the disaster relief development. And the bottom line is it wasn't the Planning Commission's fault. It wasn't the city's fault. It was the developer's fault. I don't know when they initiated the refund money for the d develop disaster relief, but it wasn't four weeks ago. Okay, they didn't get their paperwork in order in time to comply with the city's timetable and then the council's timetable. And the fact that the council repeatedly goes one, two, three, yes, 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 one, two, three, emergency, and so on and so forth, has led everybody to believe that all we have to do is make the agenda that's published in Tuesday's paper, which one can read on Friday and know for sure it's gonna pass on Monday. That's not how the code was contemplated. Emergency means there was a disaster. The levy broke. We need to pass money. We need to pass legislation. We can't wait six weeks to do it. That's an emergency. What y'all are doing with the rubber stamp it's convenience. Convenience. I, I hope I don't go to Judge Worley's court anytime soon, but you know what? What about that couldn't have waited four more weeks? 
Well, they just decided it would be a good idea to have a pilot program with two laptops and however many three motorcycle cops. That's only a few of the tickets written in the city, by the way. Probably the ones on North Hills and a few other speed traps that they're that they cultivate. But what about that was an emergency? What about that couldn't have waited? You know, again, maybe that logo should be changed to one, two, three, because that's what y'all do. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Richards. We appreciate you coming down. Uh, any, uh, without anything else, do I have a motion? So. On the motion to adjourn. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Okay.